Greetings, friends. It's another edition of the Gold and Steel Show, where we discuss all things Vegas Golden Knights. I'm your host, JP. I'm here with my co-host and my usual partner in crime, Ian. And today we're going to discuss the long-anticipated relocation and sale of the Arizona Coyotes. We'll, of course, discuss Vegas's regular season. We'll do a season wrap-up and review of how the regular season went for the Golden Knights. We now know who the Golden Knights are going to be facing in the playoffs, so we're going to talk about that playoff preview, first-round matchup for the Golden Knights, and then, of course, we'll just do a general rough playoff overview. Ian, buddy, uh, it is playoff time, and I'm super pumped. This is my favorite time of year. I know it's yours as well. Before we get to that, though, we got a lot to dive into. We have to talk about the 500-pound gorilla in the room. And you and I have, <laughs> again, y- yeah, you and I have talked about this so many times over the mm-hmm. course of this show. And it finally happened. The NHL, in my view, essentially forced the sale of the Coyotes, a full sale and relocation to Salt Lake City. We've been told today, just through a release of the new ownership, that they're going to be branded as the Utah whatever. Uh, they're, they haven't chosen a team name yet, although they did uh, register patents on five different names, which we should talk about. But uh, yeah, oh, okay. the, I didn't the, know that. That's yeah, cool. I'll, have to, yeah. I'll have to share some of that with you. The, but the NHL. Please tell me one of them wasn't the Utah Coyotes. <laughs> it, it was not. Coyotes was not part of that <laughs> list, fortunately. <laughs> but I'm going to throw it to yeah. you. I know you're pretty strongly opinionated on this. I am too. But just a couple quick facts. The Board of Governors <laughs> approved it. The sale is happening, yep. uh, that, and yeah. it's effective immediately. The Coyotes will it become is. a new franchise. They will play in Utah next season. And mm. as part of the deal, the NHL told Alex Morello, or the, the owner, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing <laughs> his name right, but the owner, that uh, yep. he has five years to build a new arena in the Phoenix metropolitan area, a new NHL ready arena. And if he can do that, he will have rights to bring an expansion team back to Arizona, which I'm certain if that happens, he will just call them the coyotes. It'll be coyotes 2.0. Now I personally have very strong thoughts on why that was part of the deal, but I'm going to hold off on that because I'm dying to hear Ian, what you think about this. I mean, this, this was a long time coming. I feel terrible for the fans. But hallelujah, uh, the mess in Arizona, yeah, it's over, it. at least for now, it's over. What yeah. do you think, man? Yeah, this now. is crazy. <laughs> yeah, so, well, okay, so where do we start? So, I know, well, there's so much to unpack. We, we said, we said they, they, you know, that they wouldn't reload, that Utah's team would be a, an expansion team. Um, obviously, we also said, because there are going to be people that said, you said that they would never relocate to Arizona, uh, from, from Arizona, sorry, to Utah. Mm-hmm. Um, but w- what we were saying was that financially that made no sense for the NHL, and it, and it doesn't. The yeah. problem that they had is neither is a team that's going to fail. So right. they ha- were left with no choice. Yeah, uh, it's Ryan Smith, isn't it? Was sat in the guy, the old guy who owns the Utah Utah Jazz, Jazz etc. Mm-hmm. etc. Um, and obviously, most importantly, the arena um, mm-hmm. was sat there saying, "Hey, I'll have a team." Uh, and it just worked out. Uh, he came out and he talked about the fact that some things about an expansion team would have been easier, but he's happy that he's got assets and a roster and a team that already has some kind of synergies and stuff. How many of them are left next season? Let's see. But yeah, still. Um, and, I, you know, I haven't seen the financials around this, but my guess is he didn't pay anywhere near what he would have paid for an expansion team. So there's a hell of a financial benefit for him for taking yeah. The Arizona Coyotes in. The weird thing with Alex Morello being kind of given this golden handshake of uh, if you can find if you can find an arena in five years, you can expand again. I'd love to know how much for, like, or is it like the price is going to be agreed at the time? Yeah, um, because as we know, Seattle paid more than Vegas, Vegas paid more than Columbus, and so on and so forth. So we all know that the uh, the NHL likes to get some income from that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they're making the right choice in terms of just killing the brand. Whether yeah. this five year thing existed or not, we both said whoever takes on Arizona, you know, it needs to needs to go. Right. Um so the Utah something. 
the Utah U Haul <laughs> donation for like that, but the uh, you know, there's the, I don't know what the five you got to tell me the five names that have been registered, but the yeah, I'll get so to that. I think that, it's good. The sure. fan base, obviously, is it nice for them? Of course, it's not, but neither's being dragged through the mud year after year after yeah. year. The Mullet Arena, you know, obviously, I never went, so I, I'm sure it was fun on some level because it was close it, you you know probably felt very much like a little community and you know all that kind of stuff but the reality is they have been a you know a black mark on the NHL for for a, you know, a number mm-hmm. of years now yeah. they've been mm-hmm. the problem that nobody could solve they've switched owners they've switched arenas they've not paid bills oh, they've yeah. been this horrible PR nightmare for the NHL for for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, Their Twitter coming out talking about them making the playoffs, that didn't go very well, did it? So (laughs) um, uh, they've just been this horrible little mess. And I'm not saying that Utah Jazz are going to be amazing next year, but at least they just get to wipe the slate clean and start again. Um, So I'm interested to see what they do, how they brand, whether they have any brand synergies from the Jazz. Like, do they go with like a purplish kind of because we don't really have any purple teams anymore because the kings don't use purple or any in alternative jerseys right so you know do they end up having like a purple and black kind of color yeah. going on so which would be like a calling back to the jazz a little bit right um don't know it's exciting from that side yeah uh, that's the fun I'm guessing stuff the nhl is just but yeah the nhl is just glad look yeah, let's be all honest on uh, on the, as we always are on this on this show but it's the nhl did not want this conversation the second the puck drops in the playoffs Right. So have all the PR press now, have all the yeah. little videos and the Smith, him and his wife getting interviewed and them saying, you know, I watched hockey when I was six, which I always think, did you? But anyway, but whatever, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Because yeah. that sounds really good from a PR campaign, but I'm kind of right. like, is that real or are you just saying that now? Right. You know, so, um, but whatever, whatever his backstory is, it doesn't really matter. The point is, get it all out now, get it done. And then they went a playoff start. Let's just talk hockey. Let's not talk finances and yeah. fail franchises and right. arenas. Let's talk what we all want to be here to talk about, which is the stuff that happens on the ice. Yeah, um, yeah. Which this year I think has been fantastic. You know, uh, yeah. and uh, so yeah, a win for the NHL, mate. To sum it up, really, I think Bettman has his critics. Did he take too long to get to this point? Well, maybe in hindsight, but the reality is, I think the solution they've come up with now. Is the right one. If yeah. Arizona do come back in, uh, you know, in three or four years' time, okay, fine. Other franchises have, have done it. Winnipeg, obviously, is the most obvious one, mm-hmm. where they went away, they got relocated themselves, and then you know, Winnipeg 2.0, yeah, came back. Yeah, um, I don't think it was expansion. I'm pretty certain that they've relocated a different relocated, team. There, but, yeah. By the by, mm-hmm. um, the point is that the franchises have resurged after disappearing, so that wouldn't be totally unique yeah um it happened so, in the nfl you know, as well the cleveland browns are, are current you know yeah. the current cleveland browns in the nfl are version two uh yeah. and i don't know if they're an ex- they might be an expansion uh but the browns moved at one point and became <laughs> one of the other east coast teams so, i forget which one the Balt, <laughs> maybe baltimore the, i can't uh, remember but I, uh, I can't take credit for this because it's a friend of mine who is uh, also a big a big hockey fan uh who said <laughs> And I'll, I'll quote him. He said that finally the NHL has cleared up the turd off the carpet. Uh, and I was like, that's a really good <laughs> way of looking at the Arizona situation. Yeah. I was like, yep, that's a fair point. Uh, it's a so great way know. to put it. And going back to what you were saying, you, can, you can't say that the NHL and Gary Bettman, one and the same essentially, did not give the Arizona Coyotes every opportunity to clean up their act every chance i mean they every chance the the arizona coyotes were on their beyond their nine lives you know if we're going to use a, <laughs> <laughs> that kind of analogy they had used up every single one of their nine lives and the nhl had granted them life 10 and life 11 so you can't say that the nhl didn't give them a shot it, it all starts at the top it's bad ownership bad decision making and i personally think i i don't i'm not sure i think it's possible that the NHL put this deal in place in order for the ownership to save face a little bit. I, I personally 
I don't think the NHL is real keen on giving this guy another franchise with how poorly it's been run. What's going to be different? If they get an expansion team, it's just going to be back to the same poor business practices, same insolvency. What's going to be different? Nothing is going to be different. If that guy can't run the team now, what's going to be different in five years? Nothing. That being said, people who are this wealthy, who have this much money to throw around, you know, they're concerned about their public image. There's some ego involved there, naturally so. I think this allows him to slip out without it looking like the NHL took the team from him, which is essentially what happened. But this allows him to exert some power and say, oh, I got some money out of the deal. A lot of money, by the way. I'm going to read you those figures in a second. Got some money out of the deal, and I've got another (laughs) chance to bring Arizona, you know, hockey. And that's the, the talk right now. Right. He gets to go out saying hockey belongs in the desert. And we're, you know, apparently I've read that they're going to move the Roadrunners, which is Tucson's AHL team, you know, the AHL mm-hmm. affiliate for the Coyotes. They're going to move them to Mullet Arena and have them play in Phoenix, almost like as a proxy in the meantime, while they get this all together. But I, I personally think the NHL mm-hmm. had okay. to do that probably in order to get him to agree. I think he probably was going to drag this out. And that was one of the stipulations. He he said, you know, I'll I'll sell it to you for now, but I want first dibs on an expansion team. Whether that's actually going to happen or not is another story. And he still, let's not forget, he hasn't been able to get land or a stadium deal anywhere. Do you think the (laughs) temperature in Phoenix will have changed on how businesses around there feel about the Arizona Coyotes? I understand that fans Love the Coyotes. I get that. It's not their concern to have to worry about the money. But the the word on the streets for a long time in the Phoenix metropolitan area is the Arizona Coyotes are insolvent and they do not pay their bills. And that's not just in Arizona. That's everywhere they go. So good luck getting a stadium deal anywhere, in my opinion, anywhere in the Phoenix metropolitan area. I don't think anybody's going to be interested in that. And I think the NHL... This is maybe a long shot, but my guess is the NHL was willing willing to roll the dice on that. They know that too. And they said, great, yeah, yeah, you want first dibs on an expansion team? Great. Build us a stadium, and then we'll talk. And behind closed doors, I'm sure they know that that's a long shot, a big long shot. So this is all, in my opinion, this is all theater. So that Alex Morello and the ownership group, or I don't know if it's just him or if there's other investors, but so that they can save face a little bit on their way out and look like they're making a concerted effort to bring NHL hockey back to uh, Arizona. I personally don't buy it. I don't think that's going to happen. But that's, you know, maybe that's just my conspiracy theory, but No, I think you're right, mate. That's the temperature right. that um, that's or that's the best yeah. read that I can get on the situation and that, that, that allows That vote that they did mm-hmm. a while back. That vote was telling. Yeah. The people don't want it. No, there is a fan base there, and I, and I said that's who I feel sorry for. But the, the, the on the masses, which isn't the Arizona fan base, it's the Arizona area, yeah, or state, and um, that they, they, they don't want it. They it, don't want it, and I, I don't. So I don't. I you know, it could come back in four phases. I don't think it will. I think that the you know Houston, I believe, will have an expansion team at some mm-hmm. point, and I and I could see somewhere else. I think they want another Canadian team. I think it'll be hard to get one, but I think they would like yeah. another Canadian team. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, the reality is, no one... let's hear these names. I want to hear. Yeah. I'm excited to hear these five names. Yeah, absolutely. So um, can... I I, ah. I was trying to look up. I remember four of them. I was trying to look up real <laughs> quickly. The uh, I should have had them ready beforehand. But uh, so the the top one on the list was Utah Blizzard. So that th- these are just okay, names that see. that the organization has registered a patent for. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to go with one of these, but it means these are names they're considering strongly, right? Utah Blizzard, I, that's I not, bad. Blizzard. Yeah. Yeah. It's not bad. Yeah. Utah Fury was another one. Don't like that one quite as much, but Utah Blizzard. Yeah, it's a bit was, like Washington Commanders. Like, yeah, yeah, right. Like that one. <laughs> right. So. It's just, yeah, it's kind of nondescript, neither here, yeah. here nor there. Uh, and then the other mm. two that I can remember are actually, interestingly, breaking... NHL naming conventions. So they went with more of a European naming convention and they, uh, Utah Hockey Club or Utah HC, which is getting into athletic and particularly uh, soccer or football naming conventions, which I thought was kind of interesting. Like that would certainly break the mold, right? But uh, Utah Hockey Club mm-hmm. or Utah HC, fascinating. Now, 
maybe they didn't register that as a name for the team. Maybe they just registered that like as an organizational name that's connected because to so the team. So that could be the limit, like, yeah. Like, the, yeah. yeah. Because like I their limited liability. Or, yeah, if I'm wrong, yeah. I thought the NHL has veto on any name anyway. They probably do. Like the NHL Board yeah. of Governors can take a name and be like, yeah, we're not doing that. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. so, yeah. I remember them talking about the Seattle, before there was Seattle Kraken, obviously everyone was talking about them. Are they going to be the Metropolitans? Are they going to, is it going to be a rekindle yeah. back to the old days? The Metros right. was another one. Right. And, um, and, and there were loads of people saying that around the, 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 the NHL has this kind of veto rights around, yeah. around namings. I, I like Blizzard, to be honest, mate. Like, obviously, we don't know the fifth one, but the Fury, I don't like because I feel like it feels a little bit... It's generic. A little bit cheesy. Yeah, um, it's just generic, you get away too. With certain, I mean, you could say, well, so does Blizzard, but the I think the Fury bit is like, you know... <laughs> yeah, right. The Utah know. Fury! Yeah, <laughs> hey, like, we're furious! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you? <laughs> you know, and you're like, okay. Super angry. Whereas, <laughs> yeah. I'm intimidated. So I'm not sure now. <laughs> Whereas Blizzard, uh, Blizzard, I, and you could do some really cool stuff around the jerseys with yeah. the Blizzard thing, with it being like um, that kind of cool ice kind of temperature colors, a real like real pastel colors now. So yeah. things that feel like you got the whole ice thing. Sure, Seattle and Vegas have both shown that you need to make when the when the team come out, you want it to feel unique. Imagine what you could do with that, like everything, all the ice, and like the, you could you could. Yeah. There's loads of stuff you could do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. From a, uh, so, yeah, I could see that working. I, I found the fifth one because I just looked it up while you were talking. Uh, the other one was Utah Venom. Eh. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of that's that's yeah. going in the fury box. Yeah, <laughs> like right. people, like, yeah, we, you have snakes, and you're like, yeah, but snakes uh, native to Utah. I'm not sure. I don't know. We, my, we, my, uh, my US. Uh, you know, animal locations is not that great, but I'm guessing that snakes are not that common in Utah. I don't know. I mean, might be. I'm sure uh, they probably have some, but it's not something you. It's not like. I the don't, state I don't animal. Think Utah it's not something you associate yeah. with Utah. Yeah, exactly. It's pre- yeah. Vegas, pretty generic. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I love that you and I are. I, I knew we were going to be on the same wavelength on on that one as soon as I said it. But um, so yeah, there's there's the names and uh, oh the other you name. Can you imagine in that press meeting they went. They said Blizzard first. That one was like, yeah, that's good. I yeah, like that. Yeah. And then around the other four, and they were like, nah, <laughs> nah. Right, yeah. You should have just should have just stuck at the first yeah, one. Yeah, no ac- no accident that they listed Blizzard first in all the press releases that have been talking about <laughs> it. So, but um, yeah. yeah. So, uh, and then one more quick thing. I know uh, we could go on about Arizona forever, but uh, you wanted to talk numbers. Now, this is not necessarily confirmed. But this seems to be what all the press outlets are saying. And this is directly from ESPN.com, which I'd say is a reasonably credible source. Uh, (laughs) If not bad, yeah. Uh, There's an excerpt from this article that says, if approved, which it was now, this was obviously before the Board of Governors meeting, if approved, multiple sources told ESPN that Smith, that would be the new owner of the team, that Smith will pay between 1.2, and you're going to have to let me finish this, my friend, because I'm sure your jaw is going to drop, will pay between 1.2 and 1.3 billion for the team. Coyote's owner, Alex Morella, will receive 1 billion. The rest of the <laughs> NHL's owners will split between 200 to 300 million as a relocation fee paid by smith and i read this somewhere else that if alex morello gets an expansion team in five years he has to buy it back for one billion so he has to he has to basically turn around and give <laughs> give all that money back to the nhl but oh we should dude, just make total that pr- sense that price uh, how on earth is, are the arizona coyotes worth that amount I of money i know what accountancy firm like audited that <laughs> audited that deal. well and like, here Here's I mean, my I thing. Like, the argument would be if someone's willing to pay, it's worth it. But the like, well, and wow. here, here's my opinion on what happened there too. And I'm doing a lot of you know theorizing. I don't have much evidence to back this up. From a logical standpoint, I think because what happened is Morello sold the team back to the NHL, who then in turn is selling it to Smith. Apparently that's how the transaction is structured. Maybe I misunderstood it, but that's the impression that I got. Which would make sense. Yeah. Yeah, which would make sense. Or, or that they're and in the middle of the transaction. The yeah. 
Exactly. Because right? they sell it to him for 1.3. Right. But they buy it for one. Yeah. And, and they throw like that. Like a three-way ex- trade almost, you know what I mean? Like so, And they retain a little bit and then the bit they're going to retain, they give out to the other teams. Yeah. Which is, so let me ask you this question the, before yeah. we wrap up this segment, because I know we got other stuff to cover, but let me ask you this question. Do you think that Alex Morello, because he held the cards to some extent in this situation, he could have made the NHL's life much more difficult. Do you think he held their feet to the fire a little yeah. bit? Do you think he said, it's one billion? I want one bit. That's what I want. <laughs> one billion. And they said, would you take, or he said, I want 1.5 billion. And they said, would you take 500 million? He said, nope, 1.25. Like, do you think he negotiated? He basically, he fleeced them because that's how badly they wanted to get the team out of there. Do you think, like, do you think there was a little bit? Cause I don't see how on earth you could, what kind of, how can you get a $1 billion valuation out of that franchise? Well, so you've come up with a better, Thought, my thought process was that the person who was writing the uh, the amount on the email, you know, sometimes when your key gets stuck, and you press <laughs> it, and then like it just keeps putting da, 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 and the numbers just keep adding on. It's just somebody did that with a zero, and yeah. just press send, and just it's a typing error for this, and just and then it everybody just kind of signed up to it, and yeah, the person who typed right. the error was like, oh shit, okay, well, it was supposed to I be just, 100 million. <laughs> Like, oh, there was supposed to be a decimal place somewhere. Yeah, I'm about exactly. Comer. I don't, I, this, I just, oh my god, how, wow, wow. Oh, I knew, who, I knew you were going to be shocked. That business, yeah. don't ever, like, don't ever let that person value houses because that is like uh, that team. So <laughs> that team is dreadful. <laughs> and you could say, yeah, but it's it's the infrastructure. What infrastructure? There is rebranding. Yeah, you're moving everybody, including all the backroom staff. Who some will move, obviously, of course they will. And again, we haven't really talked about that, but I do feel sorry for those people as well, like the back office staff, the coaching staff. They've all got to either uproot and move, or they lose their jobs. It's not their fault. Their yeah. teams ran like a turd on a carpet. But the um, <laughs> <laughs> no, we're going with it now. And um, <laughs> but like cracking me up, man. It's <laughs> but it's it's true though, isn't it? And then you've got so, and then somebody then thinks that's worth a what? I mean, the guys who own Seattle and the guys who own Vegas must have been oh. laugh. You could have two Vegas, right? <laughs> two Vegas. Vegas cost five hundred million, didn't it? Yes. I think it was 500 million. 500 and million and Seattle, Seattle cost 650. 650. So yeah. you could buy Seattle and Vegas for that price. <laughs> for the price. That's what I'm still saying. Have change. Right? That's ridiculous. It, it's insanity. I, I really ridiculous. do so think. So Batman, Batman, well, he's not, is he a genius? Not really, because obviously he's given a billion of it back to, I mean, that Morello, uh, Jesus Christ. Like, wow. Yeah. I, did, well, no, I and, did not expect and, that, man. And I was, listen, I, I was uh, expecting, like, 300 million, 400 million. That, that's what the number I had in my head. That's what you and I have theorized in the past. That's, that's. I mean, what do I so know? Sl- but slightly less than an expansion team. Yeah, exactly. Was, was my kind of theory. Right, right. Yeah, it's, so, no, I and, and you know what? We may <laughs> never get all the details on that. Maybe more will come out, but that price is insanity to me. But my guess is the NHL has evaluated the damage that's being done to their revenues, the damage that's being done to their reputation and their missed revenues for better market. And I'd be willing to bet that's why Morello was able to fleece them for that amount of money. Cause the NHL could say, yeah. well, how much money are we going to make? Yeah. How much money are we going to make by moving them to Utah? Yeah, exactly. Smith's not an idiot either. So they've all crunched he, the numbers. He's obviously done the numbers, right? Yeah. Like he isn't buying this team because he's got, a spare 1.2 billion and he decided right. that he couldn't be you know he's, he's bought everything he needs he's got 19 million supercars he was like well yeah. sod it i'll just throw it into an arizona team from arizona like, right somebody if even if it's not him has sat down and done the business case and said yeah. this is what it looks like on year one yeah <laughs> minus 1.3 billion yeah uh, and this is what it looks like in year five and year 10 and uh, so, on, so forth so yeah they've obviously done the maths i just sure. um Shocked, and I and also if anybody, any of our listeners. And by the way, this is a Vegas podcast. Yeah, if we'll, any of we'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, uh, if any of our listeners think that was good value for money, please, please, please. Even though I'm not on X anymore, and we can talk about that another time. Um, please on the because uh, I, I still through JP follow the main 
Twitter feed uh, or X yeah. feed, sorry. Yeah. Um, please tell us how it's value for money. I would love to see. Yeah. Some. I feel like some sort of like Rain Man stuff's going to be going on, and there'll be X's and Y's and all this sort of stuff. <laughs> right. And then somebody's going to go, "That's Pie, Ian. That and, is yeah. how this makes sense." And I'll be like, "Yeah, okay, yeah." Okay. It's it's pretty mind I'm blowing. Not it, but okay. And I will say one last uh, bit of info here that I read is their announcement because Smith has now officially put out a statement as well. The organization in mm. Utah, and they are going Very to play. Very cheesy, but yes. Yeah, and they're going to play at Delta Center, which is where the Utah Jazz play, and not just temporarily. They have no plans yeah, to build time. a new stadium. They're going to renovate Delta Center. I'm guessing maybe a renovation totally that, that adds seats, right, and just updates the place a little bit. But it already holds 11,000. 12,000, I think, is what I read. Yeah, so okay. it's, so it's – Which is, to be honest, that's not bad. It's better than Mullet, for sure. It's, it's, it's going to be – Six Mullet arenas. <laughs> yeah, it's still going to be on the small <laughs> side for an NHL arena, but it's it's – yeah, it's obviously a massive difference between that and it's for but professional sports. Demand, though, that helps. Yeah, yeah, and it's for and that's not it's not going to be as massive a market as someplace like Vegas or something in terms of uh, fan sport. Now, one other, one other thing I know we go on mm-hmm. about this forever. I keep saying that, but one more thing that came to mind that I've seen people talking about is TV rights and that kind of stuff. And that's another way that it affected particularly Bill Foley because there are a lot of Golden Knights fans in Utah because we're the closest. NHL hockey team. And so now the TV markets are going to shift, right? Like, and you know, regardless of fan loyalty and that kind of thing, but the whole, the TV deals and all that are, and I'm sure those are some of the things that were discussed and that's where some of that expansion or excuse me, that relocation fee comes in and blah, blah, blah. But uh, anyway, it's a lot of moving parts on this deal for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, so anyway, all right. That's enough about Arizona. We've, that's enough uh, about the turd. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. We spent a good twenty-five minutes on that. F- fortunately, on YouTube, there'll be chapter markers. So if you chose yeah. to skip ahead, you've already done so. Uh, anyway, so, let's get to Vegas. People that skipped ahead. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Welcome to the Golden Steel yeah. Show. <laughs> Welcome to the Golden Steel Podcast, yeah. where we discuss all things Vegas Golden Knights. All right, we're finally getting there, yeah. and boy, is there a lot to talk about. So in one fell swoop tonight, the uh-huh. Golden Knights playoff opponent changed. It depends on how you look at it, but it changed four times. So obviously it did. at this point in the last game of the season, la- there were two games that were deciding the result. And that was, of course, the game between Vegas and uh, who the hell did they play tonight? Vegas and the Ducks. Vegas and Anaheim. Vegas played the Ducks. Yeah, yeah. and then L.A. was playing Kings Chicago. Played and Chicago. the results of those two games were going to decide whether Vegas faces Edmonton or Dallas in the playoffs. And they started the evening by facing Edmonton because they were winning their game and the Kings were losing theirs. It wouldn't have mattered. If Vegas won their game, it wouldn't have mattered what happened in the Kings game. But yeah, then they fell behind to the Ducks, never recovered, uh, and the Kings were winning. Then Chicago storms back and is leading three to one in the third, which means Vegas is now facing Edmonton again. And then Kings come back and tie it. And all they needed was one point that game went to OT, but it didn't matter. And so now Vegas is facing Dallas again. So a uh, very dramatic yes. finish to the season. And I'm going to throw it to you, Ian. For some reason I was leaning towards Edmonton a little bit. I, I like that side of the bracket a little bit better. That's the only reason not necessarily because I think Edmonton or Dallas are going to be one's going to be easier than the other. I think they're both really good teams, but I liked yeah. this side of the bracket. I liked the uh, Edmonton, Nashville, Vancouver side of the bracket as far as a path to the final. I like it a little better than where the Knights wound up. But I know you've got thoughts on Dallas as an opponent. What are your thoughts? I mean, for first round, well, so that, what are we looking at? Is, well, it, uh, I mean, the they're good, right? Okay, let's give the, let's get the, uh, the the most obvious comment out of the way. Like they're good in terms of wins in the NHL. I, th- I think they were second or third. I, yeah, they won they the West. Were I mean, going they, into tonight, they were the best um, team in the West. Know, yeah, <laughs> that's what I mean. I, I said they didn't win the um, the President's Trophy. No, the Rangers um, won that, but that's yeah. good because you don't want to win the President's Trophy, as we've talked about many times, because it's a poison chalice. So mm-hmm. it was good good that we saw uh, Rangers make the playoffs. It's a shame they're never going to win the Stanley Cup <laughs> because, they, <laughs> because they won the President's Trophy. We all know how that um, goes, yeah. But, but Dallas are a very strong team. And the problem with Dallas is they can score. 
Um, and uh, and I think that's something to be really wary of the power play wise because again you could we could look at the matchups this year but my problem with looking at matchups this year is I haven't known going to any game what Vegas is going to turn up yeah. this season yeah I've really struggled with that mm-hmm. I mean like going into tonight I I haven't followed the last couple of games that you know since since that uh, Vegas had effectively clinched then. My kind of, okay, let's see where they end up with where my opinion was. I don't particularly think it's an easy round wherever you go at this point. We all know the Sunny Cup is the hardest trophy to win in all sports. There's a reason for that. But Edmonton, I think, would have been the more favorable matchup because of the way the two teams play. Yeah, Dallas, I feel like if the wrong Vegas turns up, <laughs> yeah. then I think Dallas could really... <laughs> Could really be a problem for 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 for, for 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 Vegas. I mean, you're talking in terms of power play percentage. It's obviously based on the the, the regular season stats, but the Stars had a 24.2 power play percentage. They were sixth in the NHL, only behind the Oilers. But the Oilers always have a good power play, so that wasn't a massive surprise. Mm-hmm. So you're talking an Oilers level power play. It was a weakness for the Golden Knights. It always has been ever since they were you know ever since their existence. Uh, but they were plus 20, so 20.2, so that's not too bad. Mm-hmm. But we know that in certain um, in certain uh, series that the special teams can be really, really important. In terms of penalty kill, it's a little closer now, but we're still looking at, a, a, in terms of stars being the better of the two, so 82% against Vegas Golden Knights, 79. So in terms of um, overall special teams, there's not that much difference. I just feel that when you look at the two rosters, that the Dallas roster for me is arguably the scarier one of the yeah. two. There's going to be lots of people listening to podcasts that are going to, going to very much disagree with this comment, which is fine. You, you'll have your own players that you really like. And I'm not saying Vegas are not a scary team. We thought they were a juggernaut team going into this season. My issue is that Dallas, to be fair to them, have been very consistent. Mm-hmm. And they've been very good and yeah. very consistent. They yeah. seem to have all the boxes ticked. They've got good, good, good goaltending. Um, Ottinger's a great goalie. They've got good defense. It's not kind of they're not like the like some of the teams in the West where there's like one or two standout players like in Edmonton. Mm-hmm. I mean, McDavid gets injured in the first game in a playoff series. They're done, right? So whereas with someone like Dallas, a bit like Vegas, to be honest, they've got kind of depth. They've yeah. got strength. They've They're got, deeper. They've got some great players, of course, mm-hmm. um, but they've but they have got a lot of kind of good players, next level players, so on and so forth. So mm-hmm. they're a strong team. They're very strong down the middle. I think that's going to be a problem for Vegas. I'd be interested to see what the face off percentage looks like after the first two games because mm-hmm. there's a risk that that we get battered in that. Right. Um, I, there are some of the moves that that Vegas made at the deadline. I believe, you know, will have helped that. It's hard to see in the stats because the stats obviously are annualized. So yeah. the, the, the face-off percentage, and I'll get it up now whilst we're on here, but the face-off percentage at the moment, Dallas are the second best team in the league, which does yeah. not surprise me at all. No, no, Because they've got so much. And they've, they've got so many players who play on the wings who can also take a face-off, which, mm-hmm. is, which is vital. Uh, Vegas Golden Knights, 50. It's over 50, but a 50.2. And a and a big chunk of that will be obviously Eichel and Stevenson. So, yeah, um, yeah it, it's it's it's. I think it's the harder first game. Is it the mm-hmm. harder bracket? It could be, but I think it's probably you know the teams on that side less. Whether yeah. that's a benefit or not, I don't know. But yeah, um, it's it's a hell of a first round. Like I would have preferred Edmonton because I feel like you've got one over them. Yeah, uh, even if it's just psychologically, mm-hmm. you know, Dallas. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, JP. Didn't you play Dallas last year? Yeah, in the conference final. Yeah, and and it was that it went. It was did it after, six, but this was at the point then where you were rolling, weren't you? So ro- was it rolling. Games? It was six games, uh, and Dallas did themselves in a little bit with Jamie Ben's ridiculous cross check on yes, Stone. He was suspended for was two it. games for yeah. that, and the team lost its it. captain. And I think in some ways that took the wind out of their sails a little bit. That beheaded them just a touch. I'm not. Conv- yeah. I think Vegas probably still would have won the series. But I think Dallas would have made it more of a series than they did. Yeah. But yes, six. Yeah, they five. No, six. Six games it, it took. And I, um, and I do feel like you this year, Vegas are not like Vegas from last year. It, they're just not strong. I mean, I can't put my finger really on why. Yeah. When you look at the you look at the roster, it shouldn't really be that different. But it, yeah. it, it is like tonight or last night for me. But today for you, prove that the Anaheim yeah. Ducks is a team that you should beat 
all day long. They're yeah. a dreadful hockey team, same as Chicago and yeah. San Jose and others are down there, Arizona. Um, but you should beat them. Yeah. And that's the game that they should have been up, like, up for. You could argue, mm. well, they didn't want to get injured because the playoffs are next. You can't go into a playoff like with that mentality. Uh, yeah. So we saw Tampa do that on yeah. the year that they clinched really, really early. And yeah. that was the year they got swept by they got Columbus. Swept. So um, it's it worries me a little bit. The mm-hmm. first game, and you know, again, this is like not exactly a hot take, but that first game against Dallas is really important. Yeah, it's going to be telling. It always is, but I think it's extra yeah. importance that we set the tone. We don't have to yeah. win it, but we have to set the tone. We have yeah. to be there on special teams. We have to be there on face-offs and we have to not get blown out. If you get yeah. blown out in that first game, yeah, that could it, be uh, could, telling. Could, could be, a, yeah, it could be a scary premonition for a, a quick bounce mm-hmm. out of the first round. Um, yeah, no, you make some really interesting points and the there's definitely been some concern in and around the fan base for sure about the lack of consistency. That being said, the Knights had more man games lost, or I think it was the second most man's game, man games lost of any team in the NHL. And it was by a long shot. It wasn't even close. So injury has been a massive problem. It's the Stanley cup hangover in my opinion. And I think that has definitely affected their consistency. Creep. I agree with you tonight. My thoughts on the game tonight were that there's a little bit of that. Let's not get injured we're already in. We don't prefer one opponent over the other necessarily. Let's just not get hurt. And they rested a lot of guys tonight, even though technically like Chandler Stevenson and, and Anthony Mantha were both out of the lineup there. They call them day to day. I personally just think that means they're a little banged up. I think if we were in the playoffs, Chandler Stevenson and played. Anthony Mantha would have played. 100%. So I, I think they're resting them because they're a little banged up. Uh, they rested Hannafin tonight. They didn't. They don't call him day to day, but they rested him. He did not play, and um, I want to say, yeah, Carrier's still out, although he's skating in a no contact jersey, and of course Stone is skating in a no contact jersey. So, you know, they even had a they had a minor league call up tonight. Like Ron Bierg was in the lineup. So, <laughs> so it's interesting. I agree with you. I think you need to tune up and you need to play well, but I could tell I just they weren't hitting a lot. I feel like this was one of those things where they're like, look, it is what it is we would rather go in healthy. That's my read on it. Who the heck knows what really goes on. But, um, but I, I completely agree with you on the consistency. I think injury is a, a big factor. Stanley cup hangover was a big factor there. Um, on the bright side, you were talking about stats, uh, the face off percentage, for instance. Yes, that's a year long mm-hmm. stat. I did hear an interesting stat tonight on the broadcast that, uh, just Tomash hurdle, his contributions are are visible instantly. His face-off yeah. percentage is 68, I think, since he joined the team. Jeez. 68, right? Th- that's insanity. <sighs> now, given that's a small sample size, but the, I don't think there's any doubt that 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 Hurdle is going to be in there taking some very important face-offs, and that's going to be a strength. Also, power play-wise, they have scored nine, nine power play goals in the last seven games. Now that doesn't affect their annual stat all that much, but in terms of heating up at the right time, wow, I would say yeah, that their power play is, and, and that's all because of hurdle and the chaos he causes in front of the net. It's mm. the combination of hurdle. And then Hannafin is quarterbacking. Like those two guys and Eichel, like on the same unit, it's a potent combo. So for the first time in a long time, if ever, I think the golden Knights may be looking at a pretty strong power play at least the first unit going into the playoffs. But yeah. like you said, it's which Vegas are we going to get? And, and that's, that's my concern. Oh, yeah. no, you're right. I mean, the Vegas, there's a reason why pre deadline, it was looking like Vegas could be in a position where they could have fallen into a wild card spot, could have fallen out altogether. Fallen out. Yeah. Now, okay. Yes, they did fall into a wild card spot in the end, but it was very, a lot closer than we were expecting it to be back in those days. Right. The moves at the deadline, like Tomas Hurtle, like Noah Hannafin, they have had an impact. So I'm probably doing Vegas a little disservice when I'm saying that, that Dallas is the scary team. Because I would imagine there's probably going to be a lot of Dallas podcasts saying, you know what, we want, we would didn't want these guys. Yeah. Because 
These guys have got a point to prove. They're the Stanley Cup champs. They made a lot of moves. They got Stone coming back, their captain. He has a big influence on and off the ice, being back and being yeah. in the locker room. Um, and, uh, you know, it's it's not like Vegas is a, is, is a bad team. Like if you compare them to the other wildcard team, it's not even remotely comparable. Right. Because Nashville finished the other wildcard spot, didn't they? Yeah, you know, and and I like, I like Nashville. As, uh, I would love to go there, um, but as me and you have discussed when you were over, but the um, maybe just for sort the food and music, to be honest, I might get mm-hmm. some hockey while I was there. But the yeah. like when you look at their roster in comparison to Vegas's, there's a gulf of, of difference between the two. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, there's not many teams that can boast, you know, lineups that will have people like Marcia So. Carlson, Hurtle, Eichel, Stone, Manta. Like this, this is this is a this is a, a force to be reckoned with. My concern is that Vegas have been inconsistent. And even after the deadline, they've still had periods of inconsistency and 100%. lost games. You know, I haven't watched all of them, I'll be honest, but I still check Bleacher Report pretty much after every game and there's been times mm-hmm. where I've seen uh, you know, I say us, but I will say us for the moment, uh, lose games that against opposition i think you guys should be beating night in night out you know yeah. um and yeah. when you look at the goalie save percentages and stuff you, you it really is hard to, other than just not playing 60 minutes and i think that's i've heard we've heard um quite a few of our our listeners whether it's nikki and others that have said i just wish they'd play 60 minutes and uh and i, I do i think if, they, if they're gonna you know it's 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 game time now this mm-hmm. is it. This is the real, now the real regular season starts uh, and you've got to make it count from game one. So they need to, I presume the first game will be in Dallas. Yeah. Uh, and they, they, uh, they do not have home obviously ice. Obviously the higher team. Yeah. No. Now home ice, does it matter? Mm, not really uh, initially because you're both going to play two games, obviously home and away. Mm-hmm. Um, but w- does it matter in game seven? Yeah, I could be, it does. Some people like it. Some people, I mean, it depends on the players you've got, but the, Getting that first, you can't don't you don't want to be coming back to the fortress to to zip down. Yeah. yeah so at exactly. least you know, split the first if you can split that first mm-hmm. those first two games, you can win one of the first two, but play well in both. Yeah. Put you in a great position. Come back this, to Vegas. This to tied. me has seven games written all over it. Yeah, it, that that and that comes to the really the ultimate point. The overall point of what we're both saying yep. here is that this is a matchup between two contending juggernaut teams it's the kind of matchup that you should see in the conference final which is what happened last year and that's there's a lot of that this year the west is so strong you're seeing a lot of juggernauts like teams are going home teams that could often make the the conference final there's going to be a couple of them that are packing their bags and booking tea times after the first round and vegas could be one of them right like that like dallas i don't think dallas is an ideal draw but like you said if vegas shows up and plays to the full potential of its roster, they can take Dallas, but you're right. It's not, it's not going to be an easy series. And the, the problem yeah. with not having home ice and the problem with playing big, heavy teams early is it's a war of attrition. And unfor- let's say they do, let's say they do be Dallas and they get out of the first round. Let's say they make it all the way to the conference final, the final Stanley cup final, whatever you're just so banged up and tired by the time you get that deep. And that's one of the reasons that a lot of times the wildcard teams don't, they don't, you know, I mean, last year the Panthers were in this position. They barely squeezed in and that's they made true. it all the way to the final, but let's face it. And it was on the they, last day. They were so banged up by the final. They were never going to beat Vegas ever. They, they were never no, even healthy. I don't think they were going to beat Vegas. Around, but, what's that? You, if the first, the first series, you, it did go, six or seven uh and then last, you, if i'm uh, not five, wrong you had a couple games. of rounds uh for yeah, vegas yeah right and and then the second round uh was against six. uh edmonton it was against edmonton six right yeah six yeah i'm um, pretty sure that one yeah, went so six I games you, you didn't really have an easy run either last year yeah um, and then dallas was right. five or the six thing, games i think and then the, the, the final that worries was five me, games. mate yeah. is you're right i mean obviously i'm looking at the bracket now but you've just colorado and winnipeg you know, again, that's not a dead yeah. cert because you would say, well, it's Colorado's to lose, but Winnipeg finished higher. So it's yeah. not Colorado's yeah. to lose. Right? It's a, it's a, it is going to be a tough game. Right. So I think this year, looking at the playoff, and this is always the worst, I suppose, but even on the East, like I'm looking at this going, I'm going to do a bracket because I love this time of year, but mm-hmm. 
I mean, Tampa Bay versus Florida on the East in the first round. Like, who are you going with there? You've got the oh. division champs yeah. in Florida sure. against a wild card team in Tampa. But do you write off Tampa Bay in the playoffs? No. Don't know. So, and and that, they're exciting, better rivals, right? those two teams. Like, that's a, yeah, those well, two teams they should be. hate each um, other. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, but it's, it's I'm, I'm excited, man. I think it's all about the first game, you know, yeah. and, um, and maybe me and you should catch up after the first two games. I think that'd be pretty cool to see how things are getting on. Yeah. Um, because we'll get a good feel after the first two games. It doesn't tell us who's going to win the series, but it tells us where the battles are going to be. Because the bit I'm struggling with at the moment, I guess, is I'm still trying to look at the two teams going, where where, where are the strengths and weaknesses going to play out? Because the teams, they do feel very similar, mm-hmm. um, you know, but yeah. we'll, we'll see. Yeah, absolutely. And, I agree with you. I don't think the home ice advantage matters to the players perhaps as much, but I think where that, where that advantage kicks in a little bit is game one, game two, because if you manage to win both of those as the home team, you, you really, the other team is really get their backs up against the wall. Whereas if you lose the first two, it, you know what I mean? Like, and then they, like you said, the game seven as well, I think there's a little bit of a psychological advantage when you get to play a game seven in front of your home crowd. But I think that, I think that to the players, I'm not sure that matters. It also depends on what arena, right? Home ice advantage would matter more for Vegas recently. I don't know if you saw the player poll, but uh, I think it was, uh, what was the percentage? It was pretty high. It was like 60 something percent of players voted or no, th- maybe it was 38%. It wasn't 68%, but 38%, which was the largest sum of players voted Vegas as the most difficult arena to play in, in terms of the atmosphere and the fans and that kind of stuff. Like they were the number one pick uh, overall. Uh, Montreal was another one. So home ice advantage yes, can mean can more imagine. for some teams than it can mean for others. But, and unfortunately, Vegas was really good at home this year. If we're talking about the regular season, they had a great home record. Just their road record, unfortunately, was that's why they finished in the wild card. Their their road record wasn't great, but um, what Which are some? The, of, obviously, is the worry though for 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 the first two games? Yes, yeah. exactly where they are. So yeah, yeah. Um, and as we as we know, mm. playoff hockey is so different from regular season hockey. So that's what I say. We'll if we come back around and, and record another episode after the yeah. first couple of games, we may be having an entirely different conversation, right? If Vegas comes back up to nothing or they come back down to nothing. And yep. that's when you're in trouble, right? I've seen teams come back from down to nothing, but it doesn't happen very often, right? Like I remember the Capitals came back the year they won the cup, which was Vegas's first year. The Capitals came back from down to nothing against Tampa in the final that year. Yes. So everybody had written them off down to nothing. They come back, win the series. I think it took them seven games, but uh, and then they went on to win the cup. So you're not completely out, but you're down to nothing. You're in, you're definitely in trouble. So um, what are some of the, if we're going to just do a playoff overview, were there any surprises for you on teams that missed or, or teams that, that made it in that you didn't expect? Like what are, what are kind of some of the, or the, or uh, was, are there any, any interesting predictions or series that you want to watch in the playoffs? <laughs> Well, so there's a few teams that will feel pretty bummed right now. There's a few teams that, like that won't feel that bummed. Well, one of them is Chicago, by the way. Somebody who's a Chicago fan. Um, I'm just glad the season's over <clears throat> from yeah. that side because it's been horrendous. <laughs> yeah. um, but the um, but you've got people like Seattle. I think will feel, you know, finishing under 500 for the season, as in a point percentage, as did Calgary. I think the two of them will feel like, you know, their roster sh- probably should have deserved more. Yeah, um, Minnesota will be gutted that they dropped out. They've got yeah. some real tough questions to ask, mm-hmm. or answer, should I say? Questions to ask themselves and then answer um, about what they do. Calgary similar, but the Calgary have already started to make move. We saw that at the deadline, Hannafin and people like that. But they've started to kind of freshen up the roster. Interested to see what Minnesota do. St. Louis, so they missed the playoffs by what uh, six points in the end. So it wasn't as close as it could have been. They're going to be disappointed as well. They really felt like they had a, a decent team. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the East, the people that are going to be really good at is obviously Detroit oh, because Detroit, Detroit missed the oh. playoffs. Exact same point percentage. Oh, uh, tiebreaker. It literally was just the tiebreaker. Yeah, they lost and, uh, the tiebreaker. That's, that's not nice. Uh, Pittsburgh obviously missed the playoffs as well. 
they're one of those classic teams, and we didn't really have any of those in the in the West this year, who threw a lot at this season. So to not make the playoffs is going to be a real disappointment for oh, them. Yeah. Carlson, uh, in terms of predictions, Smith. So I, I know that you are trying to get a episode organized with the guys, so I'm going to give you my bracket right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so <laughs> why not? So I think that uh, and actually we'll finish with Dallas Vegas so that if I'm going to annoy all of our listeners, I'll annoy them at the end. <laughs> um, so starting from right to left, according to what I can see here, I think that uh, Tampa will beat Florida. Uh, I think Boston will beat Toronto. <laughs> just to carry that hilarity uh, yeah. on. Yeah, I would love uh, to see I Toronto that, go home in the first uh, round. <laughs> I think that the Rangers should beat Washington, but it depends whether the President's Trophy curse cuts in in the first round or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, Carolina, New New, uh, uh, New York Islanders, that is that's going to be a hell of a series. Yeah, oh, I'm yeah. interested on that yeah, one. Yeah, I really want to watch um, that one. I would yeah. like Carolina to win that, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, I'm not sure they will, but I would like them to. I think Edmonton will beat LA and I think Vancouver should beat Nashville. Now, if Nashville beat Vancouver, that could be a real turn up for the books. Yeah. Because all things point to Vancouver being an absolute juggernaut this season. Mm-hmm. But we've been saying it since about three months in. Are they a playoff team? Well, right. now we're going to find out. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. That, that, it will be fascinating to me to see how Vancouver pans out. Because if, if they maintain, if they look in the playoffs like they looked in the regular season, they are a contender for sure. Yeah. Uh, but playoff hockey, as we know, playoff hockey is very different than regular season hockey. So is Vancouver built for the playoff style of game or are they just a great regular season team? So yeah, yeah. That, that, that's going to be fascinating for sure. But the surprise is not really, not at this point. I think the biggest surprise was Pittsburgh. I, mm-hmm. I, I, I felt they would be better. Um, Pittsburgh and Minnesota are the two teams that are going to have to go away and have a good look at themselves and say, okay, what are we doing? Um, are we going to keep, you know, rolling the dice or are we going to do something different? I think the right. other teams that missed all kind of knew where they were. Mm-hmm. I don't imagine St. Louis will blow everything up just because they just missed the playoffs this season. I don't see them as that kind of team. They've got obviously a new GM and everything anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, Calgary knew where they were, as we said. The teams below Calgary all knew they were rebuilding. And in the East, you know, I think Pittsburgh aside, most of those other teams kind of knew where they were. Um, so it's just, again, it's just disappointment for some of the teams. Uh, and, and this is something, I guess, you can ask the guys when you, when you catch up with them. But is some of the teams that were bad last season that didn't really make any progress. I know that's kind of how I feel as a Chicago supporter is that the – you know, Bedard aside, who obviously had a good season, albeit a little bit played with some injuries, but the, you know, they didn't really take any advancements, any steps forward as, as a team, which is always a bit disappointing. When you look at someone like Montreal, for example, they finished with 76 points, okay, which is uh, considerably less, more than uh, Chicago, Anaheim, and, and uh, San Jose, but still puts them in the Arizona on the West kind of piece. I mean, mm. Given that it was 91 points to make the playoffs, to finish with 76, they must be pretty gutted. Ottawa must be pretty gutted. That didn't work. They Again, they made a lot of moves. Um, New Jersey, a team that everybody thought was going to be a force to be reckoned with because of last season. Yeah. They finished with 81 points. Mm-hmm. Now, the East is very tough, but there's, a, there's some teams there that I think will be looking at where they finished last season, this season, and thinking we didn't go forward. Some of them went backwards, but even yeah. the ones that were at rock bottom, they didn't really take steps forward. So, mm-hmm. um, but hey, that's what the off-season's about, mate. Soul-searching. For, for us, we're not in the off-season. It's all about playoffs, and I can't wait for the puck to drop on the first game, mate. This is my favorite time of year, as you know, because I say it all the time. Yeah, All the games are on telly now, so I get to watch all the series. Um, I unfortunately have to pay an arm and leg to do it, but I watch all the series. They're obviously on the <laughs> NHL app and stuff as well. But yeah, the, yeah. they're actually on TV channels as well, like, Sky, like not Sky Sports, but the BT version, TNT, yeah. I think it is. Um, and you know, it's just it's every game matters now. Every game's like a final. It's great, right? Yeah, great. Oh, absolutely. I'm 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 pumped. I'm I'm going to. I have tickets to uh, game three. 
So nice. that'll be that'll be interesting. Maybe we record our episode just before I go to that game, or maybe we re- maybe I'll even record <laughs> maybe I'll record a little excerpt at the game and cut that into our episode. You that might be, yeah, that yeah, might be something be cool. fun. Yeah, but, I'll be um, asleep, but you should do that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah just we'll cut it in when we record. But uh, so do you do you have a prediction for Dallas Vegas? Or are you going to abstain? Ah, yeah. Sorry, I didn't give it. To so the. Um, I think I know what it's going to be, but but I, w- I want to hear it, and then I want to throw in my my thoughts. So uh, I'm going to go with heart overhead on this one. I think Vegas will win it in seven. A long, arduous series. Here's my it's thing. It's a long, arduous series. Yeah. I, I, th- for me, it's a. am with you. It's kind of a coin flip for me. I I don't. I'm not confident that Vegas is the favorite. I think this is a 50-50 this is a close to the middle, almost a coin flip on this series. I think good fortune, some, some, some bounces, health, uh, like you said, which Vegas shows up. Here's what I do think though. If Vegas gets out of this series, <laughs> if Vegas beats Dallas, look out. I think they'll go deep if they, if they get out of the series with Dallas. Barring some mm-hmm. catastrophic injury, like Logan Thompson and Aiden Hill both get injured or something. Right, like obviously, health is a major factor. But if they get out of this series, I think it will be because they found their form and look out. And Stone's back in the lineup. Like this lineup, fully healthy, is really scary. But I'm with you right mm-hmm. now. I'm kind of a fifty-fifty, which means it's going to be a great series to watch. It also means I'm going to be generating a lot of stomach acid watching it. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's playoffs, yeah, though, that's right? Sometimes the way they yeah, exactly, man. I think that's sometimes the way you want it. You know, yeah, um, that's half the fun, right? So. That's that's what makes for all the great stories. So, well, great times. We're a little overdue getting to this episode, but I'm glad we were able to get one out. Uh, and for you, all, all of our listeners, you should be hearing this on the day before day one of the playoffs the playoffs start tomorrow by the time you listen to this and uh we're very excited we're going to try to get you another episode here maybe after the first couple of games or somewhere in that neighborhood so ian it's been a pleasure as always but favorite time of year i'm excited to pump out a bunch of these during the playoffs and uh hopefully the vegas gold knights can make another run here we'll see we'll, we're going to find out soon enough and like you said after games one and two we'll probably have a better idea <laughs> of how things are going to look so all right well for our listeners uh, we'll talk to you soon thanks everybody stay safe stay well enjoy the playoffs and we'll see you soon bye-bye